So this is uh, Telia trifoliata, Telia trifoliata, Telia with the P, uh, also called uh, wafer ash, hop hornbeam, not hop hornbeam. Also called wafer ash, um, hop tree, skunk bush. Uh, it's a kind of a common, uh, common shrub. Uh, that grows on in all kinds of habitats from the uh, woodlines um, to riverbanks uh, to rich alluvial uh, forest edges. Um, it likes open canopy to partially shaded, uh, can tolerate. Uh, but this is a, just a great shrub that can get, you know, uh, I think up to 20 feet tall, like five, six meters tall. So. Um, yeah, anyway, let's look a little closer at, at uh, how to identify the species. All right, something to notice right away on the leaves is the trifoliate, the trifoliate. So each each one of these is a leaf. Each one of these is a leaf. And this is by a roach. You're gonna hear some roach. So I apologize ahead of time for that. So this is a leaf and each one of these is a leaflet. Each one of these is a leaflet. Oftentimes they have these long leaf stalks. You know, kind of, sometimes people think of it like poison ivy. It's nothing like poison ivy, uh, and it's just trifoliate. It's got the three leaflets. That's the reason why there's a lot of confusion about that. So these leaflets, you can see they kind of, uh, they, they're kind of wedge-shaped to the base. This lateral leaflet here is gonna be longer than these, or these terminal leaflet is gonna be longer than the lateral leaflets. It's usually a little bigger here. And uh, you know, they're usually short stalk to uh, sessile. Um, the top of the leaf is usually shiny, is usually shiny. This one's uh, kind of sad looking. It's on the edge, but that's okay. So at the top of the leaf is usually shiny, and the bottom, the bottom of the leaf uh, is usually hairless to slightly hairy. There is a variety that we're going to see here in a minute um, that is super, super pubescent. So um, same with the petioles. You know, uh, usually glabrous to slightly glabrous. So if you look in the sun, sometimes you can see that. I can't really see it here, but you can see the gland dotted leaves that make it stinky it's in the citrus family actually the the rotate rutaceae the rutaceae so it's in the citrus family um and there's uh larval hosts that uh like the uh certain swallowtails um uh uh different different leaf hoppers which and we'll see a really cool one in a in a second here uh that rely on this plant uh for their survival oh and look what's hiding here the giant swallowtail caterpillar the giant swallowtail larva, uh, the papilio, the papilio uh, is Crestfontes, Crestfontes, something like that. So this is an incredibly cool species. This is Enchinopa binotata, uh, at least it's in the complex. And uh, so it's probably an unnamed species because I think a good binotata is gonna be, um, its, its hosts are gonna be uh, Celastris. And this is, uh, this is the telia, the, the, the telia, the, the telia, the wafer ash. So they, they lay their eggs in the bark and then they put this, this white kind of this caulk over it to protect it. Um, look at that, isn't that cool? And then they, look at that one here. Let's see if we can get a good one on this and I'll tell you why it's called uh, binotata. So the binotata complex comes from bi two and then notes, notata, like marks, two marks. And you can see here on these cute little leaf hoppers. Um, and this one is again, an unnamed, probably an unnamed species of it uh, in that binotata complex. But aren't these cute? They're absolutely adorable. Look, they're like little dinosaurs just tromping up and down the stem. That gray, lentiled stem of the wafer ash. So again, glossy top, uh, kind of wedge-shaped bottom. It tapers to the tip. It tapers to the tip, the leaflets do. A, pale, a more pale underside, a more pale underside. Um, yeah, what, oh, it's alternate. This one looks, this is opposite. That Sometimes these terminal ones kind of look opposite, but overall you can see the leaf arrangement here is alternate. It's alternate. So each leaflet, each leaf, you know, each one of these is a leaf. Each leaf is coming alternately on this shrubby stem. Let's take a, let's take a look at these uh, fruit here. So these fruit are an umbel-like uh, cyme. An umbel-like cyme, that's the inflorescence type. And they're gonna be two seeded. They're gonna have this wing surrounding the, the seed. And this is a samara. The, the, um, the fruit type is a samara. So uh, they're gonna be, this big wing is gonna cover the seed. And it kinda looks like a, uh, you know, a, a wafer, like communion wafer, right? Uh, and then it's got kinda ash-like leaves, even though ash leaves are gonna be uh, opposite and not alternate, and that's Fraxinus. 
So Telia is actually uh, just means uh, elm, and that's uh, you know because of the fruit. The fruit look like an elm fruit. Uh, they're not related, but uh, you know. Um, it's just that's where the name came from because Linnaeus looked at it and said, "Hey, this fruit looks like a uh, this fruit looks like an an elm's fruit," and it does. Yeah, he's not wrong. Um, trifoliate, tri, um, tri, blah, blah, trifoliata because it has the trifoliate leaves, right? The trifoliate leaves. So uh, although there's no flowers on this, we uh, can put up some pictures that show the uh, the flowers have four to five, usually five sepals, petals, and stamens. It's monoecious. It's monoecious, which means that the boys and the girls can be on different flowers on the same plant with some bisexual. The boy flowers aren't going to have that, that single plant and uh, stigma, and uh, the girls aren't going to have the stamens. Um, and, uh, and so it's, it's monoecious. It's got, um, the flowers are going to be whitish to green color, whitish to green color flowers. Um, so, uh, you know, and they, it kind of, it really does look like uh, orange blossoms, you know, from, from, it's in the same family, the citrus family, right? The orange blossoms. And, uh, and you know, this fruit, it does kind of smell like hops and it, they were used as a hop substitute. And that's why the, sometimes a common name is hop tree. It's because it was used as a hop substitute. If we can see this bark is, uh, it's, it's kind of this dark gray brown. Um, uh, I guess it's it's supposed to be really bitter if you taste it. I've not tasted it to know that. Uh, it's it's very thin. A lot of lenticels. A lot of those those white dashes. Um, they're they're kind of elongated dashes there, as you can see. Look at those lenticels. Look at those. I guess the wood is supposed to be yellow colored. I've not cut one open to look, but that's what the that's what they say. But uh, maybe I'll cut one open sometime and take a look and see if it's right or wrong. And then, oh my goodness, look at this. If we can see this. Look at this, more of these, more of these lovely tree hoppers. I just love them. See that white there? There we go. No one told this Telia that it needs to be trifoliate. You know, look at that. And then look at the five. Oh, look at this one. We got four. I don't know what's going on here. This one's, uh, this one's, <laughs> yep. Yep, there we go. There we go. And this is actually uh, variety mollus. And I'm standing where it's kind of busy here. So I'm gonna go up and maybe we'll find a better one. But look at that. What are we doing? What are we doing here? Nobody, these guys need to read the textbooks. You know, look at that one. What in the world? So I'm right on the trail here in the Indiana Dunes and uh, this is the variety mollusk that I was talking about. This is gonna have really hairy undersides of the leaves, really hairy underside of the leaves. Uh, you can see it's got a pubescent stem here, a pubescent stem, of course it's young, but uh, but nevertheless, so it looks a little thicker too. It's got that, you know, that like the yeah, others, it's got that glossy, uh, uh, a daxial surface of the leaf and then the baxial surface is going to be lighter colored and hairy. Um, it's also the inflorescence and the petioles here. The petioles here are going to be hairy as well. And that's variety mollusk. We see that in, in the dune system. I'm not sure it's, it's, uh, it's, it's whole distribution, but this is clearly different than the, uh, and just it's even it's, it's condition here than, uh, than trifoliata, trifoliata. So anyway, this is a cool plant, cool plant, Telia. So uh, this is often confused with poison ivy. It's not. Uh, this is a shrub. It also uh, the leaves. You know they have that they have that wedge shaped base. Poison ivy is not going to have that wedge shaped base. They're going to be more rounded. They're going to be more rounded. And actually, if we go down over here, let's let's find some poison ivy and show you what. And also, this is usually toothless. You know the leaflets and and poison ivy is going to have some a few big lobe like um, uh, nubbins coming out of those leaflets. Look at the poison ivy here. You can see that the, those lateral leaflets, those lateral leaflets uh, are not wedge shaped down in. Look at that. Um, they're a little more rounded. You can see that a little more of a thumb on the leaves. Uh, so this is Toxicodendron Rydbergii, Toxicodendron Rydbergii. There's more in the fruits obviously look different too, those, those fruits. So 